one the chapter of insulation. Insulation is very important. It can be somebody's job to insulate walls. Here's a far away the phone. To insulate walls and blow, do blow on insulation to retrofit houses, to make houses more airtight. So we are on the insulation. How do we choose and pick insulation? That's going to be something you'll learn here. And there's a whole chapter about that. Uh, I will try to face myself and give you time to discuss this with your neighbor. Week five, we will be discussing insulation. Insulation safeguards against what type of heat loss in the house? Transmission. Transmission. To a point, yes, but mainly for tra for transmission because we transmit through walls, ceiling, floors, and we want to kind of reduce that. And we saw, look at the equation over there. We have no control over the area. We have no control over the, the temperature. We have control over the U-factor, and the U-factor is based on <coughs> insulation. So if we can control insulation, the more insulation you have, the less heat loss you'll have through the wall. We all agree on that? Yes. Where does heat go? Up. So insulating the ceiling is very important. The attic is very important to insulate. We'll talk about different types. Is it always better to insulate? Not necessarily. Sometimes you better off many things the way they are. And I'll show you mathematically, show you, I don't require that. I will show you how adding insulation sometimes can work in reverse, or sometimes it doesn't do much. So insulation type, we'll talk about different kind of insulation, and again, it's a very active area of research. You'll always have new types of insulation. If you can find a way to make insulation, you'll make a lot of money. The guy who actually found out the idea that you can use old newspaper to make insulation, it done. There's a guy who actually you find always in the in uh, this, uh, commercial papers sitting there with insulation, with blown on insulation, and that's his job. He does blown on, blown insulation, and I'll show you some tricks in how to calculate how much insulation you put in there, and uh, how can it be useful for you. And not there is no cure all. There is no one solution for all problems. And again, dumping money on a problem does not fix it. So facing and barriers, how do they help with insulation? They do help with insulation, but also they do help with transmission. Retrofitting insulation, what does that mean, retrofitting? It's going back to something that's already been built and trying to make it better. At some point, people did not care about insulation. At some time, when you are building a house, you want to save money here and there, and you end up skimping on insulation. I did live in a multi-complex, multi-apartment uh, building, and the contractor saved around $80,000 by not putting insulation between floors. They thought, okay, the entire building is going to be heated, so why bother? Well, what happened? The aftermath is, the noise was very loud. Yeah, somebody would come late at night, and you could hear them walk, making dinner, so they did not account for noise. There was a lot of complaint about that. Second thing is, I don't want my apartment to be hot. For, for me, I, did, I was living on the third floor, I did not have to turn on the heat at all. So who's paying for my heat? The two neighbors downstairs. <laughs> it's good for me, it's unfair for them. They're not, and actually at some point, it was too hot for me, I had to open the window. So okay, they're cranking up the heat, I prefer to be at 65, 60 degrees, and they actually, it's hot, I can feel the floor is very warm. So again, how insulation can be expensive, and it's better to just do it right in the beginning. So again, you have to go back and retrofit that, which is always uh, involved. So you can re-insulate a wall. Let's say this wall, we built it one day in Russia, and we found out that, okay, we added something to it. We, at some point, this wall was a closet, now with somebody living in it. Bad example, but anyway. It was a storage room, now somebody's living in it. So we need to retrofit it and make it insulated. 
what do I do? What are my options? Well, if you have a, hole, uh, a wall with cavity in it, you can replace that. If, uh, if you want to invest more, you can change, the, take out the siding, put proper insulation, then put the siding back. I don't know how much uh, Gibson board cost, but they are very pricey. And it's a, again, it's a big project to take them out. I'll put it back again. There are some very fantastic wallpaper that can provide a lot of insulation, but it's very expensive. But there are always a lot of options. There are paint that can be insulated, like spray paint. So there are options, but again, it's expensive. There's something called aerogel, which is kind of a fabric, <coughs> of one millimeter fabric. That is highly, highly, uh, have a very high R value. It can be highly insulated. Okay, so insulating a new construction, it's better always to start with good material and good insulation before you have to go and uh, retrofit it. So, insulation, three to six times the heat loss than infiltration. Why? Big area, it's what's facing the outside, it's constant during the day, it's not wind dependent, it's going to be always there based on delta T. Insulation reduces the transmission losses by increasing the air value, we talked about that. We have no control over the area or temperature difference, but we have control over the U factor. So the smaller the U factor, the smaller the heat transfer. The bigger the R value, the smaller the heat transfer. Seems like a reasonable relationship. Think about it. Resistance is going through. It will also provide uniform temperature throughout the surface. So you don't have cold spots and hot spots. What happens if we have cold spots and hot spots? This is a good uh, area for condensation. We have any kind of, uh, if you have an attic with cold spots, probably you have a lot of condensation and ice damps inside, it will drip. Uh, also, if a vent with this kind of condensation, could add structural strength. That's something that a lot of people do not think of. When you have very solid foams to a door or a wall, it can give you some kind of structural strength. Like spray foam. Spray foam. Yeah, it can. If it could be kind of flimsy uh, cardboard, something like that. Uh, my wood, if you put insulation to it, it's a kind of rigidity. Like this door, for example, is not insulated. So you can feel how hollow it is. So probably if I put some foam inside, it's gonna be more rigid. Some doors have this kind of foam, which is pretty strong, give you a lot of rigidity and strength. I, for one, do not like these kind of uh, little panels. They're very foam or so. Yeah, it's very, very, it has good insulation value, it's very cheap, but it's not really a good choice. It also reduces the noise and vibration. So noise is something we do not think about a lot, but it's a huge thing, especially if you're living in a multi-family home. So <coughs> downstairs, it's all for your own comfort if you live in a busy street. Blanche, you had a question? Um, I was gonna say that uh, with the insulation, like I had insulation done on my house the other day, and they had to have like a huge fan to like to get all the air out of the house. Oh, they were doing that test, we saw. That's a blower door test. Yeah, blower door test. Okay, so density versus the air value. So this is something I want you to think about a little bit. So we have air value, which is the resistance. And we said, who for Tommy? Uh, somebody told me, uh, yeah, you told me, that somebody bought uh, insulation and they put it in a, in a wall, but they packed some more in, and they, when they packed something in, they made it more dense. So this is the, the R value, and this is the density. Density is weight per volume. So when something is dense, it's very heavy. It means there's a lot of the material in one space. If it's big, it is less dense, but it's the same weight. So we had this trick question when we were young, like what, which is heavier, one, one pound of cotton or one pound of water? It's the same, but it's a cotton will be big, the water will be small. So it's the same as density. So let's look at the density, How, what is the R value? So the R value goes up to a point, then it starts to go down as you increase the density. So between two and four, we have doubled the insulation. Between two, three and six, we have reduced the insulation by not a very big factor, but you did reduce it, and it can go down. It's got the curve will continue. So 
at some point, the density will add a factor. We have uh, fiberglass, rock walls, very good insulation, and cellulose. So as we increase the density, we will decrease our value. Not by a lot, by, by some kind of number. And also, insulation is not cheap. It's expensive, so you're adding more cost to it. So it's not a good idea to always just add insulation and pack it up. So we stick to what is a recommendation for that cabin. Any question about that? Yeah. What's the polyurethane has the highest R value? Yeah. What is that? Uh, it's, what does it mean? Is it uh, already made in a board? Do you have someone? This is polyurethane. That's one of the? Yeah. So that's best to put in your walls then? Yeah, if you, you can fit it. But if you can think of the fitting, it's going to be a little bit challenging with the studs. So you, you can have fitted ones. And also, you're going to have a lot of wire going through your Yeah, it's not wall. possible. you got to cut yeah. exactly. So, so extrude it. You could, you, could you, can you extrude the poly, polyurethane, too? Or it's just different. polystyrene? It's different. It's different. It's different. It's you can't <coughs> extrude that into your wall? No. There's no uh, You can cut it and put it in place. And again, it has to be fitted properly. That's why they use bats, because they're more like flexible. And we can work with them. Uh, probably in your wall, you have wires, and you also have fire sometimes. But I've seen polyurethane. Yeah, keeps it from yeah, yeah, definitely. You can do that. Question. So in this case, more isn't always better. More is not always better. And again, it's not expect. It's not cheap. So how much am I going to save? Am I going to save about three BTUs an hour? It's not really worth it for me. At some point, depending on the I mean, difference, there is limit to how much insulation you can have. There is limit, and eventually, it will it will make a, a difference, but there is limit to what you can have from uh, heat loss. Okay. How does it work? So if you notice in any insulation, or most insulation material, I'm gonna spend some time on that. What is the material? Styrofoam. Styrofoam, rubber, plastic. What are those material having in common? They're mostly, mostly organic matter made out of petrochemicals. What did we say about the carbon atom from the other class? It's the least conductive material, yeah. right? The carbon atom is very saturated. It does not conduct very well. So it's made out of non-conductive materials. Be it wood, fibers, rock wool, it's mostly, some. there are some exceptions. But it's carbon-based, uh, I mean, petroleum-based. If you look also microscopically here, you'll know that we have material, and there are small, little, cabins. Sometimes they are air, and sometimes, actually, when they make the material, they put some gas, some gas with it, so it's trapped inside. So heat will go, Hot. Heat will go through the material. And I'm going to ask Jason, what is the heat transfer here? Is it production, convection, or radiation? It's conduction, excellent. Conduction. I'm going to go here, I'm going to have what in here? Conduction. It's very slow. So, think of which is faster to go to to transfer heat, conduction or convection? Conduction. Conduction because it's solid, right? Yeah. So if I compress that very much, I eliminate those little bubbles which I need. Correct? If you notice any good winter jacket, you'll see a lot of space in it, a lot of foaming area. Also, a good blanket usually is very has some space, but it traps air. What about animals? Winter animals, or animals, cold climate animals. What do you think they have? They have this cold fur. What does fur do? Keeps them warm. How? Huh? Yeah, how? No, it's that. I'm talking about the, the outside now, the fur. What does fur do? No. How? <coughs> oh, 
possibly draining the system. Insulates. How does it do that? How does it insulate? It slows down the rate at which the heat escapes it. Cause yes. It gets a first kind of like baffles and like a boiler. Uh huh. Okay. What else? Yeah. Basically, yeah. <coughs> it keeps the air in place. Mm. It keeps the air in place close to the body, the hair and the little fur. The finer the fur, the more it will keep the heat off because actually it's trapping a layer of your warm air around you. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Because the air is staying in there, and you already warm the air. So if you go, if you swim in cold water, and you wear a wetsuit, what is the first thing they tell you? The wetsuit is insulating, right? Mm -hmm. Put a little, make sure a little water. Yes. Open it up first. <coughs> Power through it. The cold, the, air, the the hot, the cold water will come inside, close it. Then you will warm the water and it will stay warm because you are not exchanging the water with the outside. So you warm the air, yeah, the water, and you're good. Same thing with the, the fur. Once you warm, you warm what's around you, you're fine. You put the jacket first, even if the jacket is cold. You put it in, you zip it up, everything's closed. A few seconds, few, your body warmth will stay inside. So you keep keep it inside. There's a fun fact about the animal. Which thing, which animal do you think have the, the best? Capability to insulate the heat. Sheep. Oh, yeah. No. Wait, wait, wait. Are we talking birds? Mammals? Or mammals. 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 <coughs> mammals. No. You said mammals. Or the polar bear. No. Well, Best fur to insulate heat. I know I was almost extinct because everybody wanted to buy it. I do know. Oh, the mean huh? A whale. A mean wolf. A tiger. <laughs> no. It was all, almost overused for its fur. Wow. It's in California. It's in California? Wow. Yeah. It's in California. Okay. It's for, uh, no. California. No. Is, is it a it's bear? It's a sea mammal. A sea oh, mammal? It's a seal? It's a... It's a, it's a no. uh, sea has blubber. Otter? Oh, uh, yes! Otter, yeah. Sea otter. Uh, sea otter has the finest hair yeah, in the animal. Wicked and it has very nice <laughs> oil. That contain the water outside so it doesn't get wet. And once it's warm, it's warm. And the, the, the hair is so fine, it doesn't allow any air to escape or any water to exchange as much. And anybody who wanted to have a coat of uh, sea otter, uh, very sad. So, a beaver, uh, beavers, and uh, they, there's otters still around here, I think. Yeah, yeah, there are some otters. The beavers are close, right? The sea otter has the, the, the denser thick uh, fur because the water is much colder in California. <laughs> So, good information. So, phone. Huh? Why not? So, how does it work? It stops the heat from connecting through the air, reduce radiation and conversion through the cavities. These are the cavities. That's how insulation works. Foam is good because again, it has a lot of bubbles. Bubble wrap has a lot of insulation because actually it has a lot of bubbles. Wool, how does wool work? Wool is a very warm material. It's the material itself, and also it traps air. So if you get a small sweater made out of wool, even though it's very thin, it's completely warm. Uh, that's why they make suit out of jacket, uh, suit out of wool, sweater made out of wool. If you buy the same sweater, one made out of cotton, one made out of wool, the wool is warmer because the material itself is warm. Also, if, if you wear a lot of sports, where the film is these these well, I mean, change that. I don't want that. I don't want to breathe very much. If you want to go in the winter in a win win uh, in a windy day, what do you put? A wind breaker. Very thin nylon or plastic that will stop the air completely from coming, and you'll be warm quickly. So a, a thin raincoat will be enough to warm some Oh yeah, all this. mine's like it's very thin, but I get really hot in it. Yeah, because it's so uh, it's it, it it does not breathe. Air is not exchanging. However, if you sweat inside it too much, you're gonna be cold because you sweat such a bad way. So there's a, always something. Uh, again, that's why they put a lot of thought in designing uh, ski jackets because they want it to be thin. They don't want it to be big. That's why not how a lot of you move and have the movement you need. So it's gonna be thin. And there's a lot of design going on in this. 
Okay, any questions? So again, installation is a very broad subject. There's a lot to it, a lot of techniques. But I want you to start thinking that cavities make a difference, material make a difference, and how do we want it to function? Or what are we trying to fight against? Where is the location? Is there, is there a lot of wind? There's no wind. Is there a lot of water? If there's no water. So water does make a difference. Again, we said water is a conductor. If I'm gonna have water there, it's gonna conduct the heat, it's going to evaporate, and cause me to have a lot of latent heat. Uh, what else? Uh, location is important. How I'm going to get that insulation in there? What uh, some some for example some insulation is not recommended for humid climate. Why? Because this insulation has the ability to absorb moisture quickly. So they tell you this is good for like dry climate, mountain places, but not in a by the shore or by a lake. And I will stop now.